All right, guys, before we get to the intro of the show that we normally do, Dimitri and I want to take a second because we never do this. Uh, one of our favorite wrestlers passed away, and we never do a proper eulogy for a lot of wrestlers that go. But, Dimitri, our friendship is based on our love for Doom and Butch Reed. And before we get to the podcast, we wanted to take a second just to say, man, what a guy who did not get enough credit for what he did in the wrestling industry. Well, I definitely agree with that. You know, when I first got into wrestling, I was 12, 13 years old watching WWF and WA wrestling and saw an AWA and saw him as the natural Butch Reed and not not his original name, Hacksaw Butch Reed. And then he entered WCW under a mask alongside Ron Simmons, which was one of the baddest tag teams I ever seen. And when they were unmasked, they were even badder. And we was talking earlier. I didn't even know if Butch Reed under there. I knew it was Ron Simmons under one of the masks, but I did not know Butch Reed was under the other one. And let me tell you, that tag team was so vicious, especially me being a young, young black male watching wrestling. You see some big thug brothers like that whooping ass. You know, it's kind of cool to see that. So uh, um, thank was, you, Butch Reed. At least for me, Starcade 90, the street fight between Doom and uh, two members of the Four Horsemen will probably be one of my favorites. That's That's really what cut my... Got me hooked on Doom. I mean, they've been around way before that, but for me personally, because, uh, you know, I feel embarrassed to say this, but still the Black Scorpion gimmick uh, storyline was still one of my favorites that get pooped on so much. But as a kid growing up, it was still one of my favorites. So, uh, you know, sue me. Anybody else want to jump in and say anything about Butch Reed before we start the show? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I always loved Hacksaw. I mean, I'm obviously... You know, been watching wrestling, you know, since I was a little kid or whatever, but he always made a big impression to me, especially, you know, I first clocked him in NWA and, um, you know, it's just like, it's so, it's kind of sad because it's like, it's kind of like that whole generation now, there's not many of them left. And, you know, he was one of the best. He was a great performer. He had great charisma, obviously, when him and Ron Simmons were a tag team. I mean, they were, they were unstoppable. So, um, going to be totally missed one of my favorites gone pete rock you guys want to jump in um you, i don't want to say no and uh be disrespectful like that but um you know it's always sad to see um you know somebody of that caliber pass away but you know obviously we're talking about him uh prior to the podcast we were talking about people that leave their mark on pro wrestling and he's one of those guys you know just like dimitri and lars said and and you and you dennis so you know um it's it's sad, uh, you know, but I'm probably when we're done here, going to go watch some uh, Butch Reed on, uh, uh, you know, on the network or something like that. Rocky. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't as familiar with his his work. Um, you know, I, I didn't really grow up watching WCW. Uh, you know, I was a WWF kid growing up. And that's really the only thing that we had uh, growing up here in L.A. So I wasn't as familiar, but I, I'm definitely uh, interested in checking out his stuff, like Petey said, probably after this podcast, because uh, it's a name that I'm familiar with and you hear throughout, you know, your, your, your days in wrestling, but um, you know, just, you know, got to check them out. And it's a sad thing to lose uh, somebody who's that important to a lot of people, you know, Stark 890. That's the first place I would send you guys. That's awesome. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say something that the beauty and the wrap around what Dennis said about the love of our podcast is because I get educated and I learn about all this stuff, even though like the, the guys say, but it's the education to who doom was and who all these guys that it, it's more of a cultural thing. So I watch a lot of videos and my education is through a lot of these conversations. I Dennis and I, our opposite in our taste, but I go look at the stuff because that's what wrestling's about to me. And that's what this show is about. And, you know, back to your thing, Justin, about Petey and Rocky are our guys. And I know what it is appreciated inside the locker room for everything they do. And that's what all means to guys like us. So th that's Amazing. the power of this podcast from the inside. And then it bleeds out. So that's the DMAC moment. <laughs> I'm amazed too. You, you know, Dimitri mentioned uh, stuff from from decades ago, 
Lars mentioned, uh, Dennis, you mentioned st- 1990. It's not like Butch Reed's had any anything recent. It's it, he, his stuff. To me, the toughest thing to do is to have stuff that's you know is timeless. Like I think of Butch Reed, I think I could just I, you could picture him. You can see his, you can see his work. The Doom stuff still holds up decades later. Like that, to me, that's a that's a superstar. Like that's somebody who who is larger than life. And thirty years after his stuff, after certain matches, you still remember it with with such vivid moments, such vivid memories. I'm not sure there's a greater praise you could put on our on a on our performer than that. With that said, you know, Butch, we were all fans, so good luck on the other side, my friend. All right, it's the only wrestling podcast on earth with two Major League Baseball All-Stars, one who is not here, being replaced by Justin Barrasso from Sports Illustrated, one who is Dimitri Young. We have one four-time Stanley Cup champion, Darren McCarty. We have Lars Fredrickson from Rancid. We have the Canadian destroyer, P.D. Williams. How's she going, eh? There you go. And <laughs> on trial, the congressional hearings of one Rocky Romero. Rocky, I warned you that I'm shocked you said yes to this. I, I told everybody. I was like, he said yes. I can't believe it. I think it was Lars who threw out like, oh, man, we should get because we were I, – I popped. I, I popped at the end of, uh, what was it, AEW and – we all did, I think. And and I think I put a tweet out there that the end of AEW was more impactful than seeing Kenny Omega on uh, Impact. And for me personally, because I'm a New Japan fan. And holy cow, you said yes. Here we are. We're going to pepper you with a ton of insider questions. I regretted that ex- right when I sent the text and I said yes. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> I told you immediately. Under, immediately. I'm going to hold you under a microscope tonight, Rocky. Sorry. You're not <laughs> to I got some questions, Dennis. When can I go? Well, hey, you Dennis. know what, La- Lars? You're, 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 Lars, you're Dennis, lucky you I grew up a rancid fan. You right. didn't preface it correctly how it happened. You know, like that's why I'm here for the truth. What had happened was Kentis showed up, we all popped, and I said, didn't I call this about the interaction? Lars said, give Rocky a call, let's have him on, and you didn't. Then you said, Rocky said yes, and we're like, lock him in, lock him in before he can get off. <laughs> That's how it went down, Rock. You know, and I didn't even have Damn. the big LG lean on you. Right, right, right. And in so. Dustin, just so you know, you jump in. Don't don't be meek because the meek don't get their answers, their questions answered on the show. I think the Bible said the meek will one day inherit the earth, but that not probably podcast, not, so I'll, I'll speak okay. up. Thank not you. on this not on this podcast. There's right. no Jesus. There's no God. It's just us guys. All right. All right. So I'm gonna start off and set the tone for this podcast, Rocky, and just ask you, how did this come down? When did you know about it? Um, damn. Okay. <laughs> right. To, right to, <laughs> I mean, I, all right. So just, right I'm going to, I'm going to do my best into not see like, give away first, too much. first of all, the, th- the, and this is a, some, a conversation I've had many times with Justin Barrasso. So he, he'll, he can back me up on this. You know what I do with new Japan behind the scenes. I try to do my best to kind of keep them behind the scenes. I'm, you know, like new Japan is such an old school, way of thinking and like you know like you know the guys who who are in charge and do things or stuff behind the scenes try to stay behind the scenes so that you know we don't ruin the 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 magic that is new japan you know because i feel like that's kind of the cool part is is like you're not really sure exactly how it works some to some parts and i feel like that's been kind of lost because we're so used to now uh you know giving all the info you know what i'm saying so so I'm gonna do my I'm gonna do my best to try to keep a little bit of that, and then I may speak kind of strangely sometimes. Uh, gals, gals, and Anderson say that it's TR Rock when I go into those kind of weird ways of talking, but uh, I'll do my best. But um, you know, uh, the idea of the whole thing with with obviously, you know, it really goes down to Kenta and Moxie and how Moxie is basically kind of the centerpiece of like all this, right? Like he, he really is, you know, like as much as you want to say Kenny is, but I I really feel like uh, Mox is right. Because impact even came to coming to AEW, you know, was to work with Moxie, obviously alongside of Kenny, then, you know, Kenta coming to AEW showing up on dynamite really from one reason, one reason only. And that's because John Moxley is the, you know, IWGP us heavyweight champion. And um, this thing, kind of got put together it wasn't 
you know, we, we got the okay from Moxley to come to New Japan Strong, which is every Friday night, NG, njpwworld.com. And uh, that's kind of where it all started, not knowing that Kenta was going to be an AEW, you know, really. Like that kind of came kind of later and kind of quickly got put together. And, and uh, you know, everybody seemed to be excited to, you know, to, to work together because they knew it was going to be, you know, promotion wise, it's going to be fucking mega huge because nobody was expecting it or, you know, and, and it, like the relationship with New Japan and AEW hasn't been a good one, you know, like, you know, it, it's, you know, even though Tony, Tony Khan has been, you know, very cool with um, letting Jericho bring the AEW title uh, at last year's Wrestle Kingdom and uh, you know, little things like that. I mean, it, it just wasn't really a great uh, situation when the Bucks and Kenny and Cody left New Japan. It, it, it just really wasn't. So um, for it to kind of happen this way and kind of organically happen, and you know, when both companies are, um, you know, are doing are doing well, but you know, during this pandemic has kind of changed everything too. You know, like just the way that we do business. So uh, here was an opportunity to do something really cool for the fans, and both companies kind of benefit from it you know rocky if if, if that if that news I mean, new japan is so good about keeping their business internal if that had leaked before Dy and dynamite's been aw has been good too sting was a great surprise right, right. uh what surprises earlier sting really caught people off guard if the kenta news had broke or, or had leaked ahead of time is that something that would have severely damaged the, the our relationship that, that clearly is growing uh yeah i would think so I would think so, to be honest. Uh, you know, yeah, like I said, I mean, we've had so many conversations, you, you and I, Justin, and and uh, you know how important, you know, keeping information is until it actually is is announced or, uh, you know, it comes out, then, you know, the way that, that time, the timeline, because the timeline for us is important. When we release, like, information, it's because that's what pushes our storylines, you know, because our storylines are, are different. You know, we don't have a show every Monday, that, you know, we, we can put out, you know, the information, keep it going. It's like, it's really thought out ahead of time. Like if uh, the match is this day, then we're going to release this information this day. And that's why you don't know what the cards are until, you know, and a lot of fans, you know, they don't like that to not know the cards. Uh, you know, they're just kind of blindly buying tickets, but you got to also know that new Japan, uh, you know, we have, we should have that trust by now that, you know, we're going to give you a great fucking product. That's why, you know, it's just certain things got to happen to, to progress the storyline so we can get there and actually announce it, you know? So Rocky, Rocky agree, like, you, know, you can disagree with me or whatever, but it seems like with this big merger that's, that's going on, um, you know, we've seen, it looks like AEW is kind of the centerpiece. I mean, I don't know if you'd agree, like, Obviously, you see uh, the Good Brothers from Impact going to AEW. You see Kenny Omega, you know, Matt Hardy, Private Party going to uh, Impact. You see uh, Kenta from New Japan going to AEW. Um, obviously, Moxley's doing stuff with uh, New Japan and stuff like that. Who knows what's going to happen next? Do you see this being a trend now with other companies, like just to name a few, like Ring of Honor might want to jump on the bandwagon or like uh, an MLW or even like Shimmer, you know, like kind of the, the the mainstream like uh indie type wrestling companies you, th you feel like they're gonna jump on um yeah i mean it, it's very possible i i know with um new japan strong uh you know which is the american for the people who don't know is is uh are like our our american produced uh hour-long uh i guess you could call it tv show um, that, you know, it's got three matches. It's a studio style show. You know, it, it's kind of packaged kind of old school in that like 80s, 90, early 90s kind of vibe. But, you know, the wrestling is really the centerpiece and the focus. And it's like New Japan style wrestling, just it happens to be wrapped in this kind of uh, world. But um, I, I feel like that has been a set, like, like what you're talking about. You know, we have, uh, you know, support from Ring of Honor. We had like, you know, we did the J cup with Chris Bay, you know, from impact. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Tom Lawler who's, who's under contract with MLW uh, and the, and um, we got guys from the independents like GCW guys that are completely unsigned. Uh, Danny Limelight, who's going back and forth from AEW and, and uh, our show. So like, uh, I feel like that's kind of just been a really uh, like a mix and that's kind of 
what I think is important and what's going to make, you know, New Japan strong, cool. Then we got John Moxley to join in, you know, which was, which was like, you know, the cherry on top. Cause that's obviously, you know, just a mega, mega name. So, you know, I think, you know, AW for sure is, is definitely the centerpiece because, you know, they have, you know, the biggest audience, you know, out of, out of all of us, especially here in the U S you know, so I feel like it's easy to, um, you know, nobody wants to forget that because we're promotion wise. I mean, we're going to get the biggest promotion, you know, out of everybody kind of meeting in that middle ground with AEW, you know, so, but I, but I want to throw strong, who's probably the smallest fish in this, in this pond, you know, between impact and AEW. Uh, but I feel like, uh, you know, this is another place where you can see all these different people coming from different companies wrestling on one show, you know, which, which I think is pretty, pretty special. So like the Moxley show, we're going to have, you know, people from all kinds of different, you know, wrestling promotions. And it's going to be, you know, really cool. Laura. Um, kind of athlete. As a former athlete, what I love about the wrestling um, with the AEW Impact is the fact that the continuity, and it seems like more the wrestlers have a voice, and every, it, it's shifting than it used to be with the dictatorship. And, and you see that because even Talk and Shop of Mania characters are showing up on Impact, and every time I see Doc Gallows BTE or do something, Sex Ferguson comes out. Can you, like, that to me seems like, can you talk about where it feels more like the wrestlers have a lot of say and even behind the scenes? Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, you got to think about it, you know, all, all like just between the good brothers, you know, I've, Moxley. I mean, we all, we're definitely all a part of the same generation. We all have the same understanding, which I think is super important. You know, it's not like, like we all knew each other before we got popular, you know, that's basically what I want to say. Like we're all on the indies together. We're all somewhere together, you, you know, worked with each other or on the same show or friends of friends. So I feel like that's super important in making all this work. And that's why the relationships are strong. And even if um, the people who, who control the money or the people who are in charge, you know, they, they all trust us individually. So that if we say like, Oh, we want to do this thing with, impact or they want to do this thing with AEW, then that it means a lot because our relationships and bonds are already like super strong. So we know that there's not going to be any like fuckery or anything behind the scenes as, and nobody's trying to stab each other in the back. Like that may be a thing of the past. I think this generation is, is more clued into uh, trying to make things work and trying to make a real mark on professional wrestling while we can, you know, and it just so happens that we are all in these positions to make that happen. Lars? Yeah, you know. I invest I, in it. And you got the investment of the fans. So the, the, that's the what it is because it's real. Right. Thanks. Um, you know, I've been a fan, obviously, of New Japan for a very, very long time. You know, whether it be through the, the um, tape trading or actually going there to my first, in Japan and seeing my first match there like 20 years ago. And then watching how everything's kind of sort of um, evolved. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, because of the pandemic, what new Japan guys are actually here in the United States currently? Um, I mean, pretty much to be honest, you know, Kenta lives in Florida, uh, and he goes and he has a home also in Tokyo. So he goes back and forth. Um, and then besides that, uh, it's just the, you know, the U S talent, you know, that, that live here, Jay, Tama, Juice, Finley, myself uh chase owens that that's probably you know probably the those those are the crew that's more likely available the um the the japanese guys for the most part you know they can come back and forth but uh you know they there's a two-week quarantine in japan so uh that's mandatory so it, it just kind of depends and the thing is now is the schedule has changed so much because only being able to have 40% capacity or 50% capacity, depending on the area in Japan, it, it, it's very likely that they've just added more and more shows to the schedule. So now it's like, uh, you know, instead of having whatever, if we had 15 to 20 shows in a month now, you know, there's probably going to be, you know, five or six more, eight more probably added to the, to the schedule, you know, just to make up for, um, you know, the capacity issue. So, uh, obviously when that gets a little better, you know, I would say like mid year or third quarter, uh, I think that it's going to be a little easier for people to travel back and forth, you know, from the U S 
Dimitri. Well, you know, all, the, all the work that you do behind the scenes, you know, one of the things that's, that's kind of I've been thinking about is like, how is the booking happening? Because obviously you got guys from AEW, guys got, got you know, Impact, now New Japan. Like, how is that booking going to work and who decides what? Uh, we got one master booker and he has, a, he's the guy, same guy who's been doing it since uh, 2009, I believe I want to say. And uh, he's, he basically uh, is in charge of all controls at all. And uh, he's got, he's got a small group of people that he trusts um, to kind of give him idea and bring him ideas. And uh, you know, as well as taking the wrestlers ideas and um, just kind of, but it, it, we've got one guy that, that, that he does it all, you know? Rock, how true is that about Gato, the stories, and I think he's touched on it before, never in an interview that we've done together, but I think you've mentioned this too. Is, is that accurate as far as you know, his his affinity for, for old school Texas wrestling, Dusty Rhodes? You can see a little bit of that in his style. Do you, have you talked to him about that? I know that that's kind of, to me, that's a very fascinating piece of of his his wrestling past. Yeah, that's he loves that stuff. He loves like, uh, the, you know, the old studio shows. He loves... Um, all the old stuff, uh, Memphis, he's a, he still watches, uh, you know, uh, Memphis wrestling as far as I know, and like goes back and watches all the old stuff. And, uh, you know, I think he takes a lot of ideas from, from those old days as well. And then mix them, mixes them in with, um, like movies, you know, he loves gangster movies and things like that, you know? So he, you'll see like, you know, I'm sure the cleaner Kenny Omega, like that was from some kind of movie that he saw and he saw somebody was a cleaner and he took that idea and, and you know, and then Kenny turned it into a guy with a fucking with a broom. broom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was his take on it, you know? So, uh, you know, but that, but that's what the cool thing is, you know? And, and I think that's what makes uh, him special is he had the idea of like, he was thinking this fucking mob hitman, you know, gives it to Kenny and Kenny's thinking, Oh shit. I, the, the mob hitman is cool for the look, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to clean up the competition literally and start using brooms and shit like that. And then he doesn't stop him. You know, he doesn't stop and say like, no, that's not what I was thinking. You know, where in most pro wrestling companies that would, that would be it. He said, you know, take it, make it yours, go with it. Just, you know, make it work. And, and, you know, so there's a lot of trust. Um, I think uh, when it comes to, you know, new Japan and, and kind of how the booking works. Hey Rocky, how's everything going? I'm still waiting on that phone call. Get you <laughs> yes, <baseball>. yes. <laughs> Sorry, but it's um, been a little hectic. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, this is geared towards you and Petey because I'm just curious on for y'all being in ring performers and then switching over to the other side and becoming a producer and doing all these big things right now. And and how do how do you make that transition? I mean, this is for both of y'all. How do you make that transition? I guess it's kind of like a player becoming a coach or something like that. But I mean, what is it? Because y'all are, it seems like y'all are more in depth with what's going on with the product going forward. Go ahead. Go first, right? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Actually, Rocky, I believe, was present in my first match ever produced. He probably doesn't even remember. Do you, Rocky? Was that, um, (laughs) <laughs> like like a lockdown or t- in TNA was that no. was that was it, was it was, uh, Lucha Libre USA oh oh out of nowhere right we'll talk yeah. about that in a little bit but uh, <laughs> yeah I mean this is what it comes down to and you can kind of see the transition and I'm sure Rocky was the same way you've been in the the business and the, the you know wrestling business for long enough and you know what to do on TV you're you're trained to like this is how TV performs like none of us walk out there and are like fully groomed. Like we have to realize where the cameras are, all that kind of, and then eventually you just kind of learn from the agents that, and the producers that, you know, that, that, that agent and produce your match. And then you start pointing out like, like, Oh, th- this could be done better. This could be done better. And then people trust you. And then you just make that transmission. A lot of the times I like doing it better because, you know, I'm not like super athletic, but, I could, you know, agent like, uh, I don't know, like a, who, the Rascals or whatever. The, I know they're not there anymore, but like a Trey Miguel and he could do everything. And I'm like, hey, why don't we try this? Like, let's do that super duper 450, whatever, whatever. That's something I can't do. Um, but the transition, I would say, is easy. The tough part, and I don't know if you've been in this spot, Rocky, 
But when you have a, a show and you're, you're doing television and then you're actually wrestling on the same show and you're like, okay, I have to produce this match. And then, you know, I have two matches, then it's my match. I got to wrestle. Then you have to go back and produce the next match. And so like, that's the challenging part. Yeah. That's difficult. That's extremely difficult. Um, very stressful days. Those are, you know, and, you know, especially like being, a, a, you know, I'm still a guy who's trying to still, I feel like prove himself constantly, you know, because I feel like, uh, you know, the generation that's watching wrestling now and especially the generation that's this generation that's watching New Japan Pro Wrestling has no fucking clue what I did, you know, before, <laughs> you know, 2000 and fucking, you know, 15 or 16, 17, you know, so. Um, so I, I feel like, yeah, like even just last year in the best super junior, everybody was like, they were sad that Rocky Ramirez and they're like, Oh, why is the commentator guy in, in the tournament? Like that sucks, you know? So like I had to prove myself then. So like, uh, I don't want to take away from those matches, but like the good thing is, is being able to do this so long. Right. PD is like, you become good at it. Hopefully it were enough for like, you know what to do and when to do it. And like, just focus on the things that are important and then kind of strip away all the, all the, all the BS that, you know, so like sometimes not having the time to, uh, to try to make all these details and, and make this uh, a really good match is, is better because a lot of shit just kind of happens naturally and you give yourself that little space to do that. So um, that's, that's, that's kind of fun discovering those things when you're not have, like overthinking everything, you know? So, um, but uh, yeah, besides that, I mean, I just, I just try to like say all the things that people have told me. I try to just give whoever I'm producing or the next generation, like, you know, like I, I, those, those nuggets that really have changed my way of thinking. I, I you know, I, I try to, you know, instill in, in, in the next gen and then, but like new Japan is, like I said, is so open in, in the fact that like, uh, you know, we don't look for cameras. So I said, I tell, I tell them to take away that, take it away. Don't even worry about, look, there's a guy in a truck who's going to find you and their professionals. You don't worry about the cameras, let the cameras find you. That's one less thing you've got to worry about that, you know, cause we're, we're so focused on like making sure, you know, you can focus on what you're doing in the ring and making it as tight and look as good as possible. Strip that one away, you know? And then, you know, so uh, you know, there, there's certain rules that we, we do that, that maybe even go against the grain of like, uh, you know, how TV wrestling is made, you know, in, in the States. And I don't know if it's going to work, <laughs> or not but uh but I, i'm just gonna i'm gonna continue to try to make the product that we're doing in japan but try to do it here in the states you know i think 10 days ago the odds on favorite for 2021 mvp was kenny omega up until last week when moxley and kinta hit the scene and i think that changes everything as far as who is going to be the leader in the clubhouse going into 2022 but i i have to ask you based on that moment do in such this is such a raw fresh thing that you guys are filling out nobody is quite sure what's going to happen have you guys kind of put a plan in place on how to at least ask talent to go from different shows do they have the freedom is it kind of, i i don't even know how to even ask that question no i think everything it, you know is uh you know, everything's got to be set up through, you know, the proper channels and, you know, everybody's got to know about everything. It's not, it's definitely not a, a free for all type thing. And to be honest, I don't think anybody really knows what's going to happen long-term, you know, everything right now is, is, is extremely from moment to moment and kind of very short term. And uh, I think that's for the good of the fans, to be honest, because it, it keep, and, and it's good for everybody else because there's a lot of moving parts, you know, there's so many moving parts, especially you have three major companies working together. There's so many fucking moving parts. So it, it'd be hard to really, you know, be too thinking too long term with this, you know. That's not so unusual, though, for Japan, though, has had to have, you know, they do these big shows, the Tokyo Dome shows and stuff like that, where they do the cross promotion stuff. I mean, there is like a blueprint for that. So, I mean, obviously yeah, there's a lot of ways you can fuck this up and I'm sure ego and money, you know, like it destroys everything. But is, I guess what I, I, my question to you is, is like, since there is a blueprint, do you see any similarities of uh, what's happening now over here in the States following that blueprint from Japan? Um, I, you know, I, I can't speak for, 
you know, what happens between impact and AEW, but I, I could, you know, for the new Japan side, you know, yeah, I think 100% there's a blueprint and they've done it so many times with, uh, you know, really high stakes. When you go back to like, uh, the new Japan UWFI feud or new Japan WAR or any of these things, I mean, it's so much of a give and take to, you know, to try to make sure that everybody gets wins out of it, you know, and it's not just a one-sided deal. So, um, you know, I, I think we'll just, you know, that, that same blueprint has, is kind of tested and proven and keep it as simple as possible, I think works for everybody. Lars, that's such a good point. As as people are always going to get in the way of each other. You know, you look at uh, Okada in an interview with, with Sports Illustrated around the new year mentioned he wants a super show in 2021. That interview is, you know, with a translator. Certain things, I don't know if they're going to get to me if New Japan really wouldn't want it out there. Like, they, they trust Okada. They want his message out there. Okada mentioned AAA and CMLL. I, I don't know. I mean, Rocky, would they ever work together? I'm even surprised that New Japan's involved with Impact because it's nothing recent, right? But it's, it's the way Naito was booked. It's the way Okada was booked. And we're dating ourselves. That's not like that's recent history. That's ancient history. But even the, the two biggest promotions in Mexico, CMLL and AAA, like, could they work together? I mean, Lars's point was great. Like, it, on paper, it seems so perfect, but right. it's always getting the way. You know what? I, I, I don't know. You know, and I've been caught in the middle of that feud personally. Uh, back in my day when I switched from CMLL and showed up on AAA TV, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, so badly that CMLL, when I, when I rejoined New Japan in like 2011, after all that, CMLL was still pissed off at me and they tried to tell New Japan not to use me, you know, like, so, um, so, I mean, I mean, I, I couldn't do Fantastic Mania until, uh, which is like the CMLL tour in Japan yearly. Uh, yearly tour and I wasn't able to do that until like just a couple of years ago so I mean the the heat was strong there so um, you know I I think the pandemic has changed things though at least you would you would think that here in this moment where the world is just taking a fucking beating just taking a beating that like here's a great moment to put the ego aside put the other things aside and let's try to work together so that you know, we can continue to feed all our families and give back to the fans who are going through a tough time, you know, and I, and I think that that's what is really kind of important. And maybe that kind of sounds sappy in a way, but I think that that's really the truth. It's like, here's a moment where like, we can actually do things to help each other instead of going the other way. And there's always going to be the big guy in the corner, always consistently watching us and trying to screw all of us over right so like why not be cool with each other because there's always the other guy who's just gonna be you know ready to pounce at any second and, and you know and, and wants us to fail wants us all to fail you know so rocky this sounds like um we read between the lines and that um big man in the corner sounds like y'all are grouping up together to go against the big bad machine in Connecticut, is, is, am I fair in saying that? Because I kind of like how everybody's merging together and, and joining forces. Cause that remind me of the old territorial days when I first got into wrestling, you know, seeing guys jump in in different places and bringing more excitement. So is that really the reason? I mean, I, I don't think that that's the, the necessarily the reason but I think, I think it's definitely uh, in the background you know, we're all thinking about it. You know, I, th I think definitely, you know, because why there's not? competition, there's competition. More competition, right? right? Like right. more, it's more like you don't care what they're doing anymore. It's not a fight. It's just like, we know where we're going. We know what we're up against. Hey, let's all do this. Here's the win-win because we will see it where, because like you said, with, we all are going through the COVID and it really like fucked the, you know, the world, but it's made people realize what they like and truth, you know, truth set you free. And it's the, like talking shop of mania. It's, it's not only the podcast, it's, it's the fact that you put it out there that you guys know that it's, it's, you know, the way that it is behind the curtain that everybody loved. And then it goes to my question is about you, Rocky, as the, as the wrestler, um, I'm saving my money so I could give it to Lance Ar to pay you to, to wrestle Lance Archer in a cage. I heard I like your style. Hey, dude, never say never. There's always money. But as 
far as preparing as a wrestler, like you, I heard a couple of interviews about you getting back in, and is it getting closer about competing and and being a part of, uh, you know, more than you have because you haven't been able to. Like your top ten, if we did a top ten list of guys who got screwed by the COVID, your storyline and it was you know, you talked about it. So, are you ready to get back at it? Because you're because you're gonna be forty soon, bro. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, the, I, I feel like, you know, 40 is, is the date there, you know, there's some goals and things that I want to accomplish, you know, I want to be like, you know, junior champion, I, you know, I, I don't want, I don't want people to just, especially like this generation, like I said, you know, I don't like, I don't want them to like, they don't necessarily have to like, look me up and see like what I did before that. But, you know, I just don't, I, I would love to be a, a player for a moment too, though, and like, and do something that, you know, just makes people feel you know, and, and makes people care and like, oh man, that, what a great moment that was like when rock, you know, what, like, uh, you know, cause I am, you know, uh, right now I'm pretty much like a, a bench player, you know? So I, I would love to have just a, a, a great, a, you know, a big moment in a big game, you know, that, you know, like throw me the ball, you know, let me, do, let me fucking hit the last shot, you know, like, like some kind of, something bro. cool, you know, you're a you know grind liner. And that's, a good, that's a compliment. <laughs> right. That's all I want. You know, I think that's all I want. And, um, you know, I, I love this business so much. I love professional wrestling so much. You know, I love what all the things that we've been able to do in New Japan over the last few years. Um, so I just, I, I want to, I don't know, I just want to be a part of, I, I want to be a part of it, you know, on the field, just, you know, a, co a couple times, you know. So we'll see. Well, maybe we need to bring back, um, well, you know, one th look at Rocky, like, I want to talk about your wrestling real fast. And I know we're, we're you know, we're, you're doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff, but, you know, the, the, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is your Black Tiger run, because I mean, you're, you're holding a legacy with Rollerball Rocco, fucking Silver King, Eddie Guerrero, you know, and you're there to ba battle Tiger Mask, who, you know, is one of my all time favorites. I want to say I saw, I didn't know it was you at the time. I'm pretty sure I was at a, at a show at Kurikan when you went against Tiger Mask. And I want to say it was 2006, maybe 2005, yeah. 2006. Yeah. That was my, that was my run. Yeah. That was my, those are my years. Yeah. And I, and I had no idea it was you, um, you know, I found out obviously later, but that, 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 um, that aura of like not knowing the results, not knowing um, you know, a, a lot of the fans these days want to know everything that they possibly can. They want to know what happens, you know, before it even freaking happens. Um, as far as like, and then you've been talking about how, like you're saying, fans don't even remember you or whatever. Um, but if you were going to go back and say this era of my wrestling career, if I wanted to teach somebody or show somebody what I'm capable of doing, as opposed to the now, because you know a lot more now, but in those first, in those tentative years, what, what's, what, what's something you'd point out? Uh, yeah, I'd probably point out, I mean, there, there was a couple of big moments, like, like my first big break was 2003 when I went over to CMLL and it was uh, myself, TJP, Bobby Quantz, who's a guy we haven't seen from in a long time, uh, against uh, Volador, Ricky Marvin, and Virus. Uh, you know, not household names here in, in the States, but some badass motherfuckers. And, you know, we kind of really had a, a moment to, to kind of rechange the game in, 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 in Mexico. And like, if, Oh, you talk to like people who watch CMLL, it's such like an old school wrestling company, you know, like where, uh, you know, there's, they were still kind of doing stuff from like the eighties and like early nineties, like when we showed up, you know, in 2003, it was like that kind of wrestling Then we came up and, you know, we're doing like, uh, you know, more, a more current style, the, you know, the six of us were so much, we're like, you know, the first time ever in my life, we, we have this match in arena Mexico and fans are throwing money. Like they threw like two grand into the ring that night. You know, so then it was so good that and the ratings were so good that week that they said, oh, we're going to add you guys to the anniversary show, which was they, they had no plans for us to be on. They threw us on. And then uh, we had another match there. They threw like five grand into the into the. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. Then we just started touring all across uh, Mexico. We just do this match 
all across Mexico and like every city and everywhere we'd go because they saw it on TV. People would just throw money into the ring after it. And, you know, so like uh, I talked to, to Mystico, the original Mystico, uh, who's the original Sin Cara in, in WWE. And, uh, you know, we had a conversation about it one time and, and he said, uh, I, I thought you, what you guys are doing was so amazing because you guys changed kind of like what the, the next generation was going to do f- with Lucha Libre. They were going to mix it in with like uh, American uh, independent wrestling and a little stuff from Japan and like start changing what, uh, you know, Mexican wrestling was. And you saw that, right? Like, like that actually did happen. So and he, he said, you know, I used to pay. He said, I was just a fan. He said, me and my wife would pay when, when, when we saw that you guys were going to be on the shows, we would pay to, you know, to go watch these matches because they were, you know, to us, they were incredible, you know? So like, that's one thing, uh, that little series of stuff, the Black Tiger, you know, uh, s- section of my, of my career, obviously, I mean, that was the, the kind of the next big thing. And then I think later on, uh, you know, any of the tag stuff, but I, I really think the, the Rapungi Vice stuff with, with Trent and I, and, you know, especially all the stuff that we did with the Bucks. I mean, uh, we were just reminiscing the other day that, you know, how incredible some of those matches were. The, the Tokyo Dome one. I think we had a crazy one in Rio Goku. The, the couple of four ways that we had with Red Dragon and uh, Seidel and Ricochet were, were just nutty. So I, I feel like lost that- the triple threat with the with the with the Hardys, too. And you guys, oh, yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, you guys, that, that was your night. Like the Bucks were great, the Hardys were great. You and Trent stole the show. That was a pay per view. I think it was an anniversary show. For yeah, Radio. that was yeah, ROH. It was a huge night for you guys. Yeah, I mean, and like to share the space with like two big teams like that. I mean, the Hardys, legends, right? And then Young Bucks, you know, greatest tag team that's probably ever lived. And then you know, you throw Trent and I in there, who were kind of a team that just kind of got thrown together, but then had this weird chemistry and magic, you know, and then, you know, I felt like we held our own against those, you know, two big teams. So uh, yeah, that's what, that was a great match too. Fuck. Let, me, let, me jump, let me jump in here because you brought up something that was super interesting to me about your, what you want to do before you turn 40, but let's say right now, what you're doing behind the scenes is changing wrestling and we don't know how amazing it is until five, six years from now. And you're part of this movement. You, you know, you were part of bringing New Japan into this fold. If your legacy ends with you being known as one of the forefathers to create this like triad of American wrestling to go up against WWE, would you be happy with that as your legacy being known as that guy? Well, you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's cool to add to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm not going to say no, right? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I think that'd be obviously something really special. I mean, this is, I th- like I said, I think this is the time to to make these type of moves and, and really try to create something special. And, um, you know, going forward, you know, my main goal, you know, I- I'm signed with New Japan for a long time, you know, so like my job is to make, new japan pop you know as much as i can and if you know and thank god that they've uh trusted me so much over the last couple years it seems like more and more and i'm in a position that really no foreigner has ever been in like no non-japanese person has ever been and ever touched the things that i'm doing right now and how much trust they have uh in me so um that's pretty crazy too i I guess that'll be something we'll add to the legacy maybe one day when i write a book and i can talk about all this shit but um uh (laughs) But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I want to change things, you know, and I want to I want to really put New Japan on the map in the US uh, more than ever. You know, I don't want us to just be the the group that comes and and does one show a year. And yeah, we sell it out. And it's like, great. No, I want to like make an actual footprint. uh, So to not only to train wrestlers, you know, bring them to have them go from Japan and America and vice versa. I want to take New Japan strong to Japan, I want to be able to do like yearly tours, you know, with, with guys that are just like branded from new Japan strong and, you know, basically make our own version of like an NXT, but it's, you know, it's better than that. You know, it's more than, than just a developmental. It's a little bit part developmental, but it's also like you come and you, you see, you know, big new Japan stars as well. This is my last question guys. And then we'll all kind of wrap it up with our own last questions. Cause Rocky has given us so much time here, but let me, let me ask this. Cause this kind of falls right into what my, one of my questions was, was 
what does New Japan Strong and New Japan, do they both hope to gain two different things from I, this talent swap, or are they both on the same page of what they hope to gain? Um, you know, it's hard to say, you know, cause you know, we can only go so far because of the pandemic, you know, like it's still hard to get visas and take people over to Japan. So, which I think gives the opportunity of new Japan strong to really grow, you know? So like maybe the good brothers, you know, they can't go to Japan, but maybe they can come to new Japan strong, you know, maybe Kenny can't go to Japan, but maybe he can come to new Japan strong. Maybe the bucks, you know, you know, maybe, maybe Petey Williams. I don't know. You know, I mean, anything is kind of, kind of open right now. And um, I, I think that all things kind of point toward New Japan Strong because that's the easy alternative, especially through and all this craziness. You know, that's something that for sure we can make happen. So um, it gives the opportunity for for the you know this 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 little show that was made for New Japan World, you know, to really grow and maybe get more eyes on it. A, uh, B, maybe people want to up their subscription, you know, with with New Japan World. And maybe we could see Strong, you know, uh, join another streaming platform or maybe, you know, uh, uh, some other TV channel would be interested with, with all the traction stuff that we're getting. So I think it's all good, you know, and, and either way, it's all good for professional wrestling in all the companies, you know. So I think that's that's the most important thing. And, the, and really, the fans are going to benefit the most. No, well, Rock, the the you just said it. The possibilities are endless. All right. So let, let's skip. This is giving me my only question. Well, one more. Um, <laughs> po- endless possibilities. Talk and shop a mania. All right. Okay. So do you see other people like from New Japan and stuff coming to talk and shop a mania? I mean, this whole merging stuff blows my mind because you're currently under contract. I've been under several, several contracts. I know there's always these no compete clause or anything like that. So, you know, Kenta showing up to AEW is already a breach of contract, which blows my mind. Um, <laughs> But it is what it is. So talk, talk and shop a mania. If you were, I know you're not the only booker of it, but if you were booking it, how do you envision uh, if there is a three or, um, you know, maybe how would you book a three? You know, I, I haven't really thought about at, like how we'll, we'll really have access to probably, you know, we possibly could have access to all three companies. Um Shit, I don't know how much we could do with the New Japan guys. There's, you know, they're not really like, I don't know if they're really talking shop of mania material. The, the way I don't know if we'll get in trouble <laughs> doing, get dick, doing dick jokes with Kenta or something <laughs> like that. But <laughs> well, hey, well, what's going to be now? I, I envision this. I have, I, I don't know. I, I don't like to know what happens on one and two. I, I just want to watch it, you know, with, with you guys pretty much. And, um, just laugh and have a good time. It's, it's my kind of wrestling because we're kind of making fun of the business and I think right. it's more for the boys. That's what I really think. 100%. <laughs> but um, now you look at the, the matches, the main, you know, draw of the matches, the, the ball for a ball. What was the first one? Um, uh, uh, boner yard, right? Boner yard, yeah. So yard, if, I had to guess, <laughs> if I had to guess what the next one is, it's going to be something where everybody gets lit on fire just based on what's happening like over the past <laughs> little bit. Am, am I right? I mean, it could be that. Uh, I don't know if we could afford a budget of lighting somebody or something no, on CGI, fire, man. Like you could do, we could like, do CGI really we, lame. We might be able to do. Yeah. I'll We've, volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. DMACT and volunteer. Great. Um, yeah. We'll figure something. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. That's a gallows thing. I leave the main event to gallows and Anderson because that's, that's kind of their, their, their yeah, they're going to work each other, put themselves yeah. over. Like they say, <laughs> right. like, you know, right. the, anyways, that's all I, mean, I got for time. I have this whole crazy idea. I mean, I want to do the longest cinematic match in history and basically yes. just make it the whole pay-per-view is just one <laughs> cinematic experience. And constant run-ins and all right. that. Kind of, dude, that's, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. But, the, yeah, but yeah, then it, it travels. We teleport to different places, maybe Bill yes. and Ted style. I mean, like, I want to do some like really fucking wacky shit, you know? Tell, so. Teleport to my house so you get more money thrown. You can get some money thrown at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just Lars throwing six grand at us. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rock, we always appreciate your time. And, and the fellas that I think as a wrestling fan who sees this to know, like, the wrestling that I put my time and invest in is behind the scenes, not only, like, behind, like, and the fact that we make fun of it and stuff like that. Talk about 
the podcast, the top, like, cause how it starts, but the fact that you guys like have, have the booze now, you have all these things that have sprouted out from it through the fans and stuff. But I, I always love that cause at the heart of it, it's, you know, the three of you that are best friends, which leads back to why new Japan, the fact that the influence that, you know, with Gala and the impact and the relationship, how it works, it makes sense. And it just, I see it playing out from like you, you guys talked about maybe five or six years ago. Hey, maybe later on, you know, we have more power. Somebody got this. Cause you know, I, I just see it playing out the way it is, but talk about how it like started for like a podcast. And you yeah. guys sit around. Yeah, the podcast, you know, I mean, we started doing the po- the first rendition of the podcast back in, I think it was like 2015 or 14, maybe. I'm not really sure. And we did that for about a year and a half, you know, Gall- Gallows Anderson and I. And then we constantly had the Bucks on there. We would always force the Bucks, AJ Styles to come in and, and do it, Ricochet. I mean, whoever was on tour, I mean... They would, they would ask us, you know, cause like really the podcast seems like it was, it's, it meant perfectly for the boys, like perfectly for wrestlers. And then it just so happens if the fans think it's funny, you know, cause that's really, it's just, it's just locker room humor, you know, that, that we're just kind of putting out, uh, in, you know, in front of the world, in front of fans. So, uh, it kind of started there and then, you know, we got tired of it, went away. And then right before the guys got, uh, let go from WWE, we had restarted it and it just happened to be, you know, kind of perfect timing because, you know, four or five weeks later they got released and then their next journey w- was just about to start, you know? And, and it, it, so we had everybody, all eyes were on us because, you know, we read it right when that happened, we started teasing, you know, talking shop of mania, the first one. And we started, you know, cause everybody wanted to know what the good brothers were going to do. And we kind of just took advantage of that situation. And uh, we've been able to be extremely successful with it. Uh, like you said, we have a, we have a bourbon that we've put out, you know, and it really all has to do with us, you know, having drinks and talking shit. So, you know, we just put out a bourbon, we have a red wine, a white wine, it's all available at tnsmania.com. Uh, then of course the two pay-per-views and, and we're, we're, we're working on so many other things that, that merchandise wise and, um, you, you, you'd be surprised about all the people who call us and we take all our, we take all the meetings, you know, so to see what, what's possibly could be beneficial in growing the brand of talking shop. But eventually, I mean, I could see talking shop um, kind of being in its, it's, its own uh, like kind of like a label, you know, where we could have other podcasts, you know, maybe it's talking shop boxing, it's talking shop baseball, you know, it's talking shop. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many things that I think we could do with it. And uh, that's, that's, I think eventually the, the, the really big idea that we want to do and, uh, and dabble in. Just hey, 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 I, I wanted to ask before um, Justin and Lars because they have great questions. Mine is a two-parter. One, okay. one, um, with all the stuff that y'all are doing, are you are y'all grooming any of the young guys at the um, New Japan Strong that we're going to be seeing in the future? And then, second, and more importantly, um, the, with the T-shirts, um, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers were sporting. Um, bullet club did they get the okay to do that uh or what was up with that they did not get the okay to do that they did not get to that. boom so that so <laughs> boom right <there. laughs> they did not get the okay to do that it was a little strange for a second i think it's okay now you know but um but i, I it, it was kind of out of left field and uh I think everybody was just a little taken aback for a second, but I mean, either way, uh, I'm sure it was good for bullet club t-shirt sales. So, I mean, it, it all worked out in the end. Um, and then that's why uh, I love the good brothers. Forgiveness, <laughs> not permission. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, new Japan strong. I mean, 100% is, is to find the next generation, like a bunch of those guys that, that, uh, like the Regals, Danny Limelight, um, Barrett Brown, Mysterioso, all those guys were, were products of that. Like they actually came in, pre-pandemic and trained with Shibata either by doing a camp or doing um, uh, whatever, like a tryout, then, you know, either Shibata ha- picked them personally, or maybe like I saw them and I, I you know, I liked what, what they did. So then um, we brought them 
you know, to have this opportunity on New Japan Strong and, and they become mainstays. Uh, and you know, so, yeah, definitely trying to look for the next generation, even like the, the, a guy called uh, the DKC, who started out on Strong as just a, a non-contracted wrestler that uh, Shibata happened to like in one of the, the, the camps. That kid ended up getting picked up and now he's an official a uh, young lion at the dojo training with Shibata. So like it, it really is a, a, a place to find new talent, groom new talent, and also, um, you know, keep our U S wrestlers, uh, you know, doing some, you know, cool stuff and cool storylines. And uh, if you would have told me, you know, a year ago that, that we would be having, you know, this, this mega title match, you know, with you know, the IWGP U S title match on February 26 with Moxley and Kenta on strong, I wouldn't have believed it, you know, cause I figured that was definitely going to happen in Japan. Uh, but just, you know, I- I'm happy that it's happening on strong. Cause like I said, it's going to bring, you know, so many more eyes to it. And uh, you know, I think it's going to be cool, you know, and it's going to be this place where all these different wrestlers from all these different companies can come and wrestle on this one show. Uh, and, you know, without, you know, too many political barriers. Justin, you get this question large. You can wrap up the show. I, I do, you know, I forget who mentioned it, but somebody mentioned uh, the the beauty of Talking Chop. I know they've, Gallows and Anderson have talked about, it, it, WWE want, uh, launched a podcast network and they wanted to have those guys do that show. I, and I love the movie, so this is a compliment, not a, not an insult, but like it reminds me of Wayne's World when they sign with the big network. Like I can't pick a gap, like the whole show. I, I don't know what would work on the WWE network. It wouldn't work. I don't, to me, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't have worked. No, it wouldn't have worked at all. The first sentence, it's like, I don't know. But I, I, this is the wrong question to end with, but you know, I never have the, the, the right forum. And this is a perfect place, I think, to ask. And having traveled to Tokyo and got a taste of, of uh, New Japan in Japan, it's just a, a different culture. And maybe Dimitri, I don't know, in the minors or in hockey or in music, but it, to me, it's so interesting that some of the wrestlers get sponsored. So like if you're Hiroshi Tanahashi and you're sponsored, how does that work, Rock, in terms of like, or is Rocky Romero sponsored? Like, can you tell your sponsor? I know it's a lot of families too, right? Can mm-hmm. do they take you to a restaurant? It's just to me, that's something that's such a foreign concept. Or PD could talk about this too. In American wrestling, I don't think there's anything quite like that. But can you touch on the, the I think that's such a fascinating aspect of, of wrestling in Japan. Yeah, I think, you know, it's really a cultural thing. And um, I would say it probably started with like, I'm sure like the sumo culture or something, you know? So like when the sumos would go and, you know, they'd have a, a winning night or something, you know, there would be a sponsor of some sort that would, uh, you know, either be set up through the company or maybe just some through a, a mutual friend or somebody where they would, you know, hey, just say like, Hey, you know, you did a great job. We'd love to make sure that you're taken care of, you know, and, and it's, it's a thing of eating well, maybe, you know, they might give you a gift. They might give you a cash gift. I mean, there's, you know, uh, and it's just a, a, it's just a thank you. And then with wrestling, I think it's really became a big thing, you know, because, you know, we tour all throughout all the different, you know, cities. So, uh, you know, we're, we're, it's very ingrained in like whatever the local government is, you know, so um, you, you might go there, there might be a local promoter, you know, there's a local, you know, somebody you have who's, sponsors? yeah, yeah, no, I've got, I've got sponsors, um, no sponsors during COVID right now, which, which kind of sucks because uh, all the guys are, are, are just basically wrestling and then going back to the hotel rooms, but like, um, yeah, uh, I got tons of sponsors. You know, they're they're a good time. They're good people. Just you know, you really make solid uh, friendships and long lasting relationships with a lot of different folks, and um, you know, really just super cool folks. I mean, well, some crazy, that. cause some crazy ass nights too. Some crazy, crazy fucking. Nights. <laughs> <laughs> now, this sounds silly, but the fighting spirit's it's so real in Japan. If you lose, does that affect the relationship? Like, do you still get the dinner if you lose that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, yeah, you, you might just have to do like a lot of apologizing, like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'll get them next time though, I, you know, but it's going to be okay. You know, you might not get the cash bonus then that time, you know, this is a true, this is a, this is a true story though. Aki Bono, you know, he, so he was obviously Grand Sumo, like, or Grand Yokozuma. He won the whole thing. He had one sponsor, he told us, and uh, that he, when he won the, the championship, he came back and the sponsor had him meet, you know, he was like very, very like rich dude, like CEO of some big company. And uh, he met him up at, the, uh, up at his 
suite in his hotel room. The guy said, uh, you know, I'm just so happy. You know, we've been friends for so many years. I feel like this is something that I've always wanted to do when you won the championship. And he gives him a briefcase. Yokozuna, uh, Akibona opens up the briefcase. It was like $250,000 cash just to say thank you for winning. Yokozuna just being his friend. <laughs> it was fucking wild. <laughs> I need sponsors like that, though. Where yeah. are you guys? <laughs> I, I want to see your mug on one of those little mini Boss coffee cans, like out of the vending machines over there. Get you a Picari or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Tanahashi is on uh, Zima cans right now. You remember oh, Zima, the old school they Zima? They got Zima still? Yeah, they oh, got they Zima still there. <laughs> and Tanahashi's doing a high fly flow on them right now, like as we speak. Wow. Lars? Yeah, you know what, Rocky, once again, thanks so much for taking your time. And I know we kind of drilled you and stuff like that. And one of the things I want to say, though, is, is that uh, we've had you talking on here talking about Talking Shop. We've had you now talking about New Japan. But I would love to have you back. I'm sure we all would to talk about your actual fucking career, because I think, you know, a lot of the stuff that you did is, has been so influential on, on what we're seeing now in wrestling. And I guess my last question is, and, and you know, I've been asking a lot of our, our guests here because I feel like, and I'll say it again, we're in this golden age of wrestling. You know, I mean, we're, we're, we're basically what I feel like is not it's not really taking on the big guy. It's, it's just like the, it's like as Dimitri always points out, it's like the territories again. Um, going from dressing room to dressing room to dressing room, since you guys all have a, you know, camaraderie, you've, you've all been wrestling with each other for so long. Do you think that's one of the main reasons why this is working or can work? 100%. I think that that's the, that's the secret sauce to all this is that, uh, you know, we're all friends. I mean, like the bucks came, you know, they were, they came to my wedding. That was the last time I saw them, you know, it was two years ago when they came to my wedding, you know, uh, you know, Gallows, you know, Anderson was my best man gallows, you know, was there for five minutes and then he disappeared. I don't know what happened to him. Um, you know, so like, even like, uh, there's an amazing picture um, that was taken at my wedding from what, with all the wrestlers. And uh, one day, one day when, you know, probably 20 years from now, I'll release it. And and it's just an amazing picture to see who's actually involved in, in that. And, and and if this thing does do well, you'll see why. And it, cause it, that picture tells the whole story. Justin, where can people find you, buddy? Uh, si, uh, SI.com every Wednesday, the week in wrestling this week, the lead, we'll have the end, a couple comments from the undertaker, uh, speaking highly of Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, but also an interview with one of Rocky's, uh, old friends, uh, the great Muda who's, who's back wrestling and you got a big match oh, for pro wrestling Noah. So, uh, that'll be this Wednesday on SI.com. Now Rocky, uh, promote away. Cause you got 900 things to promote. So <laughs> we're going to save the last 42 minutes of the show for you. <laughs> yeah at azuka rock a-z-u-c-a-r-r-o-c on twitter and instagram uh rocky romero merch.com you can get all my merch um but really new japan strong every friday night on njpwworld.com it's uh the subscription for new japan world is like nine bucks it's well well worth it some amazing matches you got all the classics from back in the day uh, as well as all the new stuff. And they're pumping out uh, tons and tons of, uh, uh, of new stuff right now during this new beginning tour. And then February 26th is the big day. Moxie versus Kenta, IWGP US heavyweight title. Not going to want to miss it. It's going to be fucking awesome. Well, for you kids at home, the show's over. For us, we'll stay and say our goodbyes off here. This is, look, wow. One of the, I think Dimitri sent me a text that just said, this might have been the best show we've ever done. And for Dimitri to send a text like that means that's how we have to end this show is the best show I think we've ever done. So thank you for coming back to the wrestling perspective for your 900th visit. Uh, we had balloons and strippers, but COVID we had to cancel them all. So <laughs> we appreciate you coming on again, buddy. Thank you.